Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Quantum Leap Futures Morning Leap Session for Monday, July the 18th, 2016. My name is Doug McKay. I am the founder of Quantum Leap Futures. Each morning we get together to take a look at the market macro to micro, take a look at the structure of the market, and then we drill down to our targets, our le trade levels, and our hypotheses for the day. This is a subscription room, so I'll put up the contact information in just one second if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, before I do, please read through the disclaimer. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance is not indicative of future results, and any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own due diligence, your own trade plan, and your own risk metrics. If you're interested in checking out the room, just send me an email at quantumleapfutures at gmail.com or send me a Skype request at Doug underscore McKay. I'll be the one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Um, if you like this video, there's, uh, I don't know, a year or two of uh, videos up on uh, YouTube just to search under Quantum Leap Futures. And if you like what I do, follow me on Twitter at Crazy2. All right, so let's take a look at uh, Friday. Friday, uh, we opened auction just out of range. We rotated back down inside of the value area, went down, took out the naked BPOC, tried to break out of the value area, couldn't. Then we broke through the low of the day, and we went down towards that 46, which was our target, but we didn't get there. We only got down to 49, rotated back up, and then chopped around in the lower distribution uh, from the prior day, and then checked uh, one more time up into the value area, which they rejected and came back down. Now, Friday afternoon, just as the market was closing, it was being uh, released on the news that there was a uh, military coup in, uh, in Turkey, and the market actually uh, sold off and uh, and went down and uh, uh, where did we get to? Let me just bring this up into the 30 minute here. So we actually went all the way down uh, during the our, uh, extended hours trading all the way down to the low at 43 and a quarter. Now this isn't going to be included in our uh, Globex session because on Friday I discount the ETH and only start the, uh, uh, the Globex on Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. But we do have to be aware of the fact that we did dip down into the 43. We did hit that target of 46. We just didn't do it in the RTH session or the Globex session. And uh, this gap remained open uh, even after we opened up on Sunday. Uh, of course, uh, by the time we opened up on Sunday, the coup had already been uh, 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 overthrown, and uh, you know the government is, was back in control. So uh, you know we didn't have any major uh, issues to deal with. Uh, everything was right in the world again. Um, so let's take a look at the news. We don't have a lot of news today. We do have NAHP Housing Market Index at 10 a.m. We've got uh, 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 TIC long-term purchases at 4 p.m., but, you know, really no real news uh, today. Today it's all going to be, you know, about headline news, about what happened in Nice and what's happening in Turkey and what's happening in the Euro, uh, but no scheduled news. Uh, in terms of earnings, we did have... Uh, before the open, we had uh, Bank of uh, America. Uh, they came in out. They came out at uh, slightly better than expected, um, but their growth is uh, is uh, slowing, and uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of a kind of a, a a beat, but it wasn't a real strong beat. We also had uh, uh, Schwab that uh, should have been out about five minutes ago. Let me just. Uh, and they still haven't put it out. And then after the market, uh, we've got Yahoo and we got Netflix, which will be the big two. Um, Bancorp, um, that's about uh, the two big, uh, the two big ones there. So this is really the big kickoff of the earnings 
Um, so we'll have uh, a lot of earnings this week. We've got 19 tomorrow, 20 Wednesday, 21 on Thursday, and 22 on Friday. Each day I like to start my day taking a look at the macro to the micro. The way I do this is I simply use a candlestick chart <clears throat> with a 9 EMA and a 20 SMA uh, moving average. And then I'm looking for slope and separation and where we are within the trend, within the time frame. I start with the monthly and work my way down uh, uh, you know, to uh, intraday. Uh, but you can see on the monthly we had this beautiful trend. Then in the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, we tested it, but we popped back up and we went and made new all-time highs at 21.68. This 21.68 is a Globex all-time high. Uh, we have not uh, tested it again in the RTH. Uh, it's like an unadjusted uh, prior high on a different contract. The Globex highs are usually tested in the RTH at some point in time. Uh, right now we're trading 21.57 and a quarter, uh, so we still have range capabilities to go up and uh, test that both on the daily and the weekly. So just keep that in mind, but we have pulled back a bit. Um, going down to the weekly, we have a possible FUBAR Mr. Sneaky tech gap happening on the weekly. Now it's only Monday, uh, so this has uh, still got the rest of the week to you know to play out, and it could change from a Mr. Sneaky. Uh, to a double top or put in a new high, but something to be aware of is that we've got the possible food bar, Mr. Sneaky, on the weekly, which, you know, the last three weeks have been, uh, you know, huge, huge run-ups all to new all-time highs. We've got slope and separation to the upside, so the trend itself is uh, very strong in the weekly. We don't even begin to challenge the uh, the trend on the weekly until we get down to the 21.03, 21.04 area. I'm looking at the 2104.50 area. Uh, going to the daily, same thing. We've got uh, good slope, good separation. Uh, there is a Mr. Sneaky here. A little bit of a tech gap, but not a FUBAR. Um, so, you know, a move down to close this technical gap will bring us down to the 2132 and a quarter. I'm looking at 2146. That's the microcomposite VPOC of the two-day balance that we just broke out of. Uh, we'll look at that in a minute. But uh, the overall trend is still up on the daily. On the uh, intraday, uh, we've had this really strong move on the four hour. We came down and tested it uh, on that uh, turkey news. And then we popped back up and we're starting to get a possible continuation. Uh, we did come down and test the, uh, the 20 from above, but now we're back above the 9. Uh, and, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of uh, separation, but we do have slope, so we do have possibility of a continuation happening on the four hour. Going to the one hour, you can see we've been in this consolidation mode on the one hour uh, and just chopping around, but we are above the 20. We're just breaking below the nine right now. Uh, move down to the 20 will take us down into the 21.56. On 30 minute, same thing, a lot of chop. Below the 9 and the 20, we are challenging the trend here on the, uh, on the, uh, on the uh, 30 minute. And then going down to the 15 minute, you can see we've got a possibility of the start of a downward trend. Uh, we had this naked cross. We took it out and uh, you know, they now come back down with the move up into the 2160. The 2160 was a CHVN and a microcomposite VPOC uh, from the two-day two balance up there. We'll take a look at that on the composite in just one second, but 15 minutes starting to look weak. And then on the five minute, same thing. We've got, uh, you know, a move down below the nine and the 20. We do have a naked cross right here at 21.58. Likely to come back up and test that at some point in time uh, coming into the RTH session. Uh, so we are seeing a little bit of weakness, but it's very, very, very small amount of weakness. But, you know, we are due for some type of a pullback at, uh, at some point in time uh, with this strong move that we uh, made. Taking a look at the structure. So we had this balance that we were in, uh, you know, uh, from March 17th through to the uh, breakout. And uh, since the breakout, you know, we've just, uh, you know, we've gone parabolic. We've uh, hit uh, several, uh, several gaps. Uh, they came down and closed this gap on uh, on Friday, 
um, but we're currently uh, trading up in this upper distribution. Just below is a small uh, CLVN at uh, 56.75. Uh, the value area for the two days is down at 55, and uh, you know uh, we've got this thin area. The two-day microcomposite VPOC that we just broke out of on that gap on Thursday is down at 46. So anything below 49 and a quarter, I think you got a really nice short into 46 into the uh, into the two-day balance because you know we got to get a pullback at some point in time. 38 and a quarter is going to remain our key line in the sand. Below that, I'm looking for a bigger pullback down to close uh, you know these two gaps uh, here and uh, possibly come back and test the breakout day, which is uh, the uh, July the 8th, uh, which was the, you know, the real breakout day, and start coming back and repairing some of the uh, auction down here in this thin area. Uh, overnight, We've gone up to 63 and a quarter, so we have an overnight high at 63 and a quarter. We have an overnight low of 53.50. And we have a VPOC at uh, 57. I don't think it's going to change, but it can change. Um, if we come back up into this uh, 5850, it could shift up into there, but currently right now it's 57, and we're trading just above it. This is also the midpoint um, uh, of the uh, prior uh, day on Friday, and we've got an LVN up here at uh, 60, uh, and a, uh, 6075 is just above the value area. I'm actually going to use the value area and target the 6075 to get funded if we get above it for a move to take out the overnight high. And then that's really all the information that I need from overnight. Move this over, stretch this out a bit. So we got this, uh, this uh, CLVN at 56.50. It's right at the midpoint and the IB high and just above the VWAP. So I am going to use this as a trade area. And then below that, I'm looking for them to come down and take out the naked VPOC at 5450 uh, from uh, from Friday, and the overnight low, and the naked close. The naked close is at 5250. And then just below that, we've got the value area low and the LVN from Friday. And then below that, we've got the 49. And anything below 49, I'm targeting the 46 and the 45.75, naked VPOC and naked close. And then uh, below that, we've got the key line in the sand. At 38 and a quarter. And then below that, we've got uh, our daily downside ATR target. So our 20 period ATR is running 3160, but that has the outlier, which was the Brexit, which was a range of 12050. Uh, so I've taken that outlier out. So that brings our daily ATR down to 2753. So off of the high overnight, our daily downside ATR target is down here at 213575. And on the upside, uh, off of the low overnight of 2153.50, uh, our daily upside ATR target is 2181. Our 20-period 20 weekly is running at 53.6375. So our upside weekly ATR target takes us into the 2200 uh, at 2207 and a quarter. Uh, so let's do the levels to the uh, low side right now. Uh, below the 48, targeting 46.45. Uh, there's nothing really below us. There is a uh, a 43 and a quarter two-day microposit uh, value area low, 
Plus, remember that we had the 43 and a quarter as the low of the ETH session on Friday on that Turkey news. So I'm going to be using that as a, uh, a uh, trade area. And then below that, I'm looking for a move down to 38 and a quarter. Anything below 38 and a quarter, uh, a move down to test the daily ATR and the naked VPOC at 33.75. Uh, it's also a CHVN. And then we've got 30 uh, and a quarter with the naked V pot, uh, naked close at 30.50. And then the next uh, key area is going to be the CLVN at 21.26 and a quarter. Then we've got 22, and then we've got all this repair, the uh, naked single and the 50% of the significant breakout candle is all the way down here at 21.14.50. I uh, don't think we're going to get down there uh, today. We're not going to worry about it. And then above, there's not really much above the uh, above us, above the, uh, the 59.75, I'm targeting that 60.75 and the overnight high at 63 and a quarter with the trade area at the range high on Friday at 64 and a quarter. Anything above that, I'm looking to come in here and uh, hit some new highs up at uh, 21.68. We uh, still have a measured move up at 21.88.50, but there's not a lot to guide us up here. So I'll be targeting quarters as I usually do at uh, 75, and then that, uh, that measured move and the uh, daily upside target at 81. But there's really not much. Anything above 64, you want to be long and stay long to see uh, that move and that takeout of the Globex all-time high at 68 uh, in the RTH. So those are my levels. Um, it is Monday, so, uh, you know, There'll, there'll be some uh, some adjustments being made here. Uh, right now, we have our Keltner center line at 57.75. Uh, above it takes us up to the upper Keltner uh, line to the overnight high at the 63 area. If we stay below it, a move down to the lower Keltner takes us down to the 51 and the value area low from Friday and the takeout of the overnight low and the naked close and the naked VPOC. So that's uh, what I'm looking at. In terms of hypotheses, we're going to be opening up inside of range, inside of value. So I'm expecting an open auction in range. Uh, I'm looking for a move down. My hypo one is a uh, rotation down into testing the uh, value area low and the takeout of the overnight low and the VPOC and then finding uh, initiative buyers down here and rotating us up through value and back up towards that uh, 68. So uh, hypo one is an open auction in range, move down, find buyers somewhere between the 54 and the 51, maybe even dipping down to the 49, but move back up. Uh, you know, up into, uh, you know, making new highs. Uh, hypo 2 is an open auction out of range, a move up to test the value area high or failure at the LVN uh, and then failing to take out the overnight high and then finding responsive sellers and rotating us down, chopping around between the 51 and the 49 and then a continuation down into the 46. I give fairly uh, weighted odds for hypo one or hypo two to play out. So I don't know which one's going to play out, but I give it a 50-50, and you could really flip hypo one with hypo two, uh, and uh, and have hypo two as hypo one and hypo one as hypo two. But as it is, the normal option would be a pullback and then a continuation uh, to take out that, that all-time high. Um, hypo three is a open auction in range, a move up, failure to take out the overnight low in the VPOC and the naked close, chop around in the 60 area and this, uh, this micro composite uh, VPOC and then get continuation up through into the 2168 and then chopping around between the 60 uh, 68 and 75, maybe even testing the daily upside ATR target at 81. And then hypo 4 is the opposite, a move down, testing the 49, failure through the 46 chop, 
and then continuation and a move down into that 33 to 35 range uh, and, a, and a strong uh, pullback. Um, we did get a bit of a pullback on Friday afternoon, so more likely going to get a balancing area, so I put more weight into uh, hypo 1 and hypo 2. Uh, that's uh, what I'm looking at. In terms of gold, uh, my VPOX, I mean my my composites are all messed up. I had to do a full reboot uh, over the weekend, so things that weren't saved. All right, so balance right now is at uh, the 29 area. We had looked for them to come down into this 22 area and find buyers. So far, so far they have. They're balancing out. Uh, the key line in the sand is going to be the 1312. Anything below 1312, look for them to go down and test the uh, 1300 and possibly into the uh, 1200s. The big target below is down here at uh, 1286, 87 area. Um, and, you know, it all depends on what we do in the indices. Um, but if we can hold this uh, level, I'm expecting more chop here as they accept this price around the 32 area and then uh, uh, around uh, the 32, 31 area and then another push back up into the uh, balance that we just fell out of in the 57. And then if we can get above the 63, a move up to test the 75 and 77 area and a push up into the supper distribution where we've got a fair amount of undetermined fair value up there. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at uh, in gold. Uh, that's going to complete our pre-market session. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.